What up everyone, welcome back to the channel, Jamal here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to inspect a Flutter Web Apps Elements using Google Chrome browser. So let's hop into it. So if you're struggling to inspect your Flutter Web App in Google Chrome, then don't worry, I've got you covered. In this guide, I'll show you how to enable semantics in your Flutter code, allowing you to effortlessly write automation script in any test framework that you love. So what do I mean by enabling semantics for a Flutter app? So let me take you across this screen. Right here I have a local Flutter app project that I've been working on. So you can see that we have some products. It's all about sneakers. If I click my filters, most popular, this um, Adidas Converse it's labeled as. And let's say I click size six. Let's try to add this to the cart. So we have our add to cart button. And now we just want to verify that, you know, the product was added to the cart. So this is an actual real life use case that many people who use automation or UI testing would face. But the problem is with the way Flutter operates, if we try to inspect this page, let's see what we get. Okay, so nothing really looks like there's any elements. And that's because Flutter renders the web pages like a canvas kit and it doesn't automatically allow us to see the widget tree so we can inspect our elements. So right now, when I try to hover over Adidas Converse or 210, it's just this big web UI or Flutter view as it's labeled right here, that's being popped up. But no worries, we can definitely fix this and that's what I'm going to show you. All right, so let me hop back over to my notes. I call this like a hidden gem. So enabling the web elements in Flutter so they can be inspected. So let's take a dive into this page. So to enable Flutter web app to render web elements for automation, you or a dev will need to activate the semantics feature in the main.file. So this is in your Flutter app, in your code base, there's a main.file and we need to enable this semantics and this can be found right here. All right, so in our main.file, you should see a function similar to this. You have a main asynchronous function and you should just have this function right here, run app, constant app. So this is what kicks off that build and renders our Flutter apps. But in there, what we want to add is this line, semantics binding dot instance dot ensure semantics. Okay, so you want to add this line and what this line is going to allow us to do is render the widget tree so we can inspect individual elements on our page. So let's take a look at the Flutter documentation about this. So in our Flutter documentation, we have screen readers. So let's see what it says. So for mobile, screen readers, talkback, voiceover, it enables visually impaired users to get a spoken feedback about the contents of the screen and interact with the UI by using gestures on a mobile app and keyboard shortcuts on desktop. So this is what we're interested in. Um, using like UI interactions. Let's scroll down to browsers and let's read what it says. So screen readers users on web must toggle the enable accessibilities button to build a semantics tree. Users can skip this step if it's programmatically auto enable accessibility for the app using this API. So what we have is this same line of code. That's all it takes for us to render our web elements so we can see the tree. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So let's copy this code and I'm going to navigate into my Flutter web app project. So here I am in Visual Studio. This is my project kicks. So I'm just going to look for the lib folder and in there we are supposed to see the main Dart file. So once we're here on our main function, what we want to do is simply add that line of code that we've copied and add it anywhere in this function. So I'm just going to add it here. And what I'm going to do right now is just import that library and click save. So before I build this locally, let's hop back into the notes. So here in the notes, we have what we need to do to build this locally. So in your Flutter project, open up terminal. And what you want to do is pretty much run this command. And we can take a look at the official documentation for Flutter web renderers. So these are the web renderers that are available in Flutter. So we have a HTML renderer and we have a canvas kit renderer. And you can see what they say. This renderer, which has a smaller download size than the canvas kit, um, and it uses a combination of HTML and the CSS elements. And then we have the canvas kit 
This one is just gonna give us a more native feel, like a Flutter mobile and desktop app type of feel. So you get faster performance and higher weight density. And it's a little bit heavier. So that's pretty much the two options that we have. And again, these are the commands here that available to use. And this is the command that we're going to use to run locally. So let me just copy this and I'm going to head back into my Visual Studio. I'm going to paste that and then click enter. Okay, so now we're just gonna wait for this Chrome instance to build. It should build locally and launch. So let's give it a few seconds. All right, there we go. Our app has just spinned up. So now we have this Flutter app. So now let's try to inspect the elements and see what happens. So I'm just going to click inspect. And now if I get my little selector, we can see now we can interact with all these elements on the screen. Before this wasn't possible, but now we have all these information and elements readily available for us. So now that we have our elements available, this would allow us to create our automation script using any framework that we love, whether it's Selenium, Cypress, Playwright, you name it, you can now interact with these elements as expected. All right guys, so there you have it. This is how you can enable your web elements on a Flutter web app project. You just simply add that line inside of your main dot file, and this is going to expose that widget tree for you, which is super, super helpful for your UI testing, or automation testing. I do have a sample project that I created where I went through the add to cart process using that same website that we just discussed, but this will be covered in another video. If you haven't joined my Patreon, check it out. I have exclusive content where you can get access to my repositories. You can send me some questions. I will help you debug your problems. A bunch of good gems inside of there. So, and thank you guys for watching. If this video was helpful, definitely hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see y'all in another video. Peace out.